Okay. Now, remember last time I had shown you that my, with my retirement, I would hopefully have 1.365 million, that's with 5% a year at the end of five years from my current assets, my wife's and my current assets of a million, plus future contributions of an A and a G, all right? But I really wanted 1.5 million. Now, why is that? Well, folks, you can do your own planning. And I can tell you that all you really need to do your own planning is this. You need a set of compound interest tables, which you can get from the internet. Or if you want, uh, yeah, just get from the internet, you'll find them. These numbers are not going to change. I will guarantee that. Remember, this is end of period convention. You also need a pencil, maybe eraser, some paper. And what I like to do is, I always like to do my analysis. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot something. You need a very basic calculator, just like a simple one. You don't even need the business calculator, just like a TI-30 and that's good enough. And I usually like to do this uh, during the summertime. I sit on my deck, look at my yard, and I like to drink a glass of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, but that's not required. And remember, you only do that if you are of legal drinking age. All right, so why $1.5 million? Well, let's see. Let's do another cash flow diagram, shall we? See, I had done this a priori. I did this uh, some years back, and so time zero, I'm going to pay, make this 2023. Now, why is that 2023? That's because that will be my age five years from now. No, actually, I'm going to be 67 approximately five years from now, and that will be year 2023. So what we're going to do is we'll set that at zero. Now, my timeline is going to be 30 years. Now, folks, I really do not expect to live that long because I will be 67 years old. And if I were to live another 30 years, that will put me at what? 2053 and I will be 97 years old. And the likelihood I will be alive is very low. Frankly, uh, for all intents and purposes, I'll be dead, but that's okay. This is a conservative approach and my children will be able to take care of themselves. All right. now. So let's just assume, by the way, that of my 5%, in other words, this is going to earn 5% a year during the 30 years during my retirement. All right, now let's do this. Let's put an A in. And notice that when you have a gap in your time period, you put in some squigglies like that. Okay, this is my A. By the way, why is this going down and this is going up? because this $1.5 million is not in my pocket. It's in some investment at some firm. This is money that I will withdraw at the end of each year for 30 years. That goes into my pocket and I, my wife and I use that to, uh, for our spending money, okay, in retirement. So there's an A. And what I want to do is to give myself a little bit of a raise each year. And again, this is drawn not to scale, okay? And this is going to be an arithmetic gradient. All right. So there's going to be a G in here. We're going to have a G, an A. We have a P, we have an I, and we have an N. We have all the factors we need to do a cash flow diagram. All right. So I have two questions. The first is, what is A? In other words, in my first year of retirement, how much money can I withdraw a amount, which will be continue, which will be constant over the 30 years? And then the next question is, what is a plus 29 times g? Now this little bit of an increase I'm going to give myself is it's going to be 29 times. In other words, it's at time. This is at year 30. This is at year one, okay? This would be the lowest, this would be the greatest. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this. And again, this could be done simply, doesn't require any sophisticated computer power other than a TI-20 or 30. 
All right, so we got two cash flow diagrams here. What I want to do is to put them in the context of what's the present value of these A's over 30 years and what's the present value of the G's. Because my total P is equal, going to, equal to P sub A plus P sub G. Now, we know that P is $1.5 million dollars and that's going to be P sub A plus P sub G. And what we can do is then we can solve for what the A and the G are. Now, what we have to first do is this. I'm going to make G a function of A. So in other words, at the end of the second year, and remember that a gradient skips the first year. At the end of the second year, I'm going to take 2% of the A and I'm going to add it. And then at the end of the third year, I'm going to have two G's. So G is equal to 0.02A. All right, let's go down here. Is this, my P sub A, that's really the present value of the A, is equal to A times P over A, 5% 30 years. P sub A, if you look at the tables, that is 15.37 2. All right. Notice that it has to be less than 30 because this is an investment and the 15 is much less than 30. All right. So let's let's keep track of that. Now what's my P of G? It is going to be G times P over G 5% 30. But we now know that G is equal to 0 0.02 A. Why? I defined it, of course. Times P over G, 5% 30, which is 168.622, which is equal to, P sub G is equal to 3.37244A. All right? So, all right, let's go back down here. My P is equal to P sub A plus P sub G, which is 15.372A plus 3.37244A. And so in other words, it's equal to 18.7444A. Now we'll go to the next page. And we're very close to calculating what how much I can withdraw in the first year of retirement and what the amount will be at the end of the 30th year. So remember, P is equal to P sub G plus P sub A. P is 18.7444A. P is 1,500,000 is equal to 18.7444. A. So in other words, A is $80,024. Now folks, let's think about that, all right? This is my 1.5 million. I is 5%. This goes out 30 years. And this is going to go up. We have an A and then we have a G. So in other words, what that means is this. At the end of the first year, I can withdraw $80,000 to pay for my and my wife's expenses. Now, of course, this is pre-tax. You have to pay your taxes and you have to pay also all your other expenses, obviously, okay? But if the Social Security rules were to remain the same in the future as they do now, I think my wife and I could get about thirty to 40000 Social Security a year. So if you take the 80000 plus the Social Security, it's going to be over 100000 and that's in retirement. So at the end of year one, it's going to be 80,000 plus social security. Now what about the end of year 30, which uh, most likely I will not make it. And frankly, I don't desire to live to be 97. If I live, I don't know. Whenever I die, I will have lived a good life, a good long life. So what's the end of year 30? It is going to be A plus 29G. Now why 29? Because remember, 
the G skips the first year. So the first, at the end of the second year, you add a G. At the end of the third, you add two Gs. At the end of the 29th year, you're adding 28 Gs. And at the end of the 30th, you're adding 29 Gs. All right, so this is going to be equal to 80,024 plus 29. And what I said G was from the previous page was 0 0.02 A. A, which is 80,024. So what that is equal to is is 126,438. And you go, oh my gosh, that's an enormous amount of money. But folks, remember, because of inflation, and the Federal Reserve has a target of 2 or 3% inflation a year, the purchasing power will be much less in the year 2053 than the year 2023. And this is a small incremental increase. So that's going to be 126,438 plus Social Security, whatever that is in the future. So in other words, uh, if I think we will be OK. I think we will be doing perfectly fine. And what I really want to emphasize to all of you, particularly the young people, is this. It is never too early to start saving money. So in other words, here's some good principles. Whenever you work at any time, you save 10% of your gross. And you put that into your savings for retirement or other savings, but retirement's a good example. So if you make 20K per year, you save $2,000 a year. If you make uh, 150,000 a year, then you automatically take 15,000 and you and you put it away. That's a very good approach. And I would have an automatic withdrawal. So you don't see the money and it takes effort on your part to take it out of the bank or financial institution to spend. And another thing is to start saving early. And I want to give you an example here. Okay? So let's say you're a 22-year-old student just graduating. And let me just give you an example. And let's say if you put uh, 10,000 in. Most of you don't have 10, but let's say if you were. And you're going to let that sit in the account for 50 years. Why? Because you're most likely going to retire when you're 72 or 70 because the Social Security age will most likely go up. All right. But on the other hand is you're going to live a very long time. Probabilistically, okay? What is my F? So let's do this. F is equal to P times F over P, 5% for 50. So let's go to the tables. 5% F over P, 50. Oh my gosh, 11.467. In other words, whatever P you're going to start off with, after 50 years, this is at 5% a year, it is going to be worth more than 11 times what you started with. So this 10,000 will be worth over 100,000. And remember, you do this every year because of the powerful impact of the compound interest equation, your savings and retirement is going to grow exponentially. And ladies and gentlemen, all of you young people out there, that is a fundamental advantage that all of you have over all of us old people. You have more time, 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 and time. And look at the powerful, multiplication, actually exponential effect of this compound interest equation.